Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is. I'm Cyclone. Welcome to Marlowe's Play Training Simulator Classic. So I had to pick some American content to do, and I earlier today I started to uh, work on some Horseshoe Curve. Now the reason I chose that, uh, I lo looked at routes 25 to 28, which are all American. New York, New Haven is number 28, which I want to do soon as well. Lots of DLC to look at. 27 is uh, one that I'm completely forgetting. Oh, Pacific Surfliner. Uh, let's also remember 30 is Northeast Corridor. Uh, 29, I forget, but I don't think it's related. 31 is Chicago Yard, which is old. We don't have that anymore. And then 32 is Donner, and 33 is Zelda Carlisle. So we're back into the London to Brighton area after that. Uh, but 20, 27 is South Pacific Surfliner. 26 is Mariah's Pass, which we've already worked on a bit. Going to go back again. And 25 is Horseshoe Curve. So I've now that I've remembered where a lot of the American content is in my library, I'm going to start pulling out some of that older American content so we can start taking a look at it here. So as you can see, I started working on Horseshoe Curve earlier today. Uh, I then went to uh, take a break, and this was like around the dinner hour. I went to take a break for dinner, and um, came back to find that none of the recordings saved. So uh, I'm basically this is all spoiled already. I already know what's going to happen in both these scenarios. Uh, I am not going to be surprised by any of this. I'm not even going to act like it, but it means that I can also tell you what happens in these scenarios, so you know what to expect. And the first thing to point out. I have a silver star. A gold star I don't think is possible unless a gold star is tied to the 850 point marker, which it might be. I didn't check that in the scenario information. I should have. But um, unless the gold star is the 850, you can't get a gold star. In fact, I ended up uh, on not even on the leaderboard on my on this scenario because all my friends have got 847 or better. Let's see what we can do about that, huh? I've uh, done some, uh, shall we call them tweaks? Uh, and uh, I'm probably going to be hated for it, but well, I don't care. I don't, the points don't matter. Uh, anyway, the other scenario is the same deal. Uh, damage at Rose Tower. We're going to do that next time. And for some reason, my score isn't even on the leaderboard on this one. I complete. Oh, there it is. So you can see I only got 948 on that one, and uh, I'm third among uh, three or second among three people there. So had a perfect run going, and then the last stop, I didn't get the last couple points. But as you can see, neither has a maximum score possible. We're going to take care of that. So let's go back to early morning switching. We're going to start with that one. These are both quick scenarios, so at least three recording them won't be a problem here for me. I like that. So uh, we're going to do early morning switching, and let's see how well this goes today. And hopefully it saves the recording this time. I hear you're a new guy around here. I'm Jones, and I'm going to start you off with some switching in ERS-15 number 8550 and see just what you can do. Nothing too complicated. There are 10 mixed scrap cars which need clearing from outside the shops. I'm currently showing you where that is. I know it doesn't match the script, but he's already taking me. Keep driving forwards until you hit your reverse point. Your switches are already set to get you there. When you pass the reverse point, come to a stop, manually switch back to those freight cars here. I'll show you where to go next when you're coupled. Let's get to it! Okay. So, our train. Uh, is this guy? I'm going to go ahead and put the reverser up because we've been told to couple rounds. But we're going to take a quick look at the engine. We're going to switch her. And uh, we're at a uh, ending point. As you can see, there's a turntable behind us. So that's what we're driving today. And get ourselves up to speed and that will take the thing off for a proper picture. There we go. That'll work. So we hide this. You can get a nice proper picture of our little uh, shunter here. we got another one moving next to us, which is doing its own activities here. Beautiful. So we have two shunter trains both doing their shunting. All the tracks we've been told are set for us, so I'm not concerned. We are able to continue straight along on our forward movement on 858, yeah, 8550. You can see the main line over there, and that train uh, is number 9774A, and you can see 8548 is hanging around over there as well. So uh, the engine that was over there, by the way, is still moving, and uh, there it is, 8806. It's now in the garage, or in the shed, as you want to call it. There's some worker people just taking a break, apparently. So, back into the cab. Some more uh, buffer stops, so some more lines that end right there, and uh, back to a full 15 miles per hour. We have to go to the reverse point and stop there. Now, I don't think it counts as stop. No, we don't have to actually mark the stop. But we have to go to the reverse point. If we do not, and we back up into the consist without going all the way forward, it will count as an operational error. And um, I'm not sure what happens if you then go back to the reverse point, but um, since you're already coupled to the cars, there's not really much you can do at that point, is there? Uh-huh. 
So we'll see. We'll uh, go ahead. We'll get to the reverse point. And we'll do it properly. Now there is a worker in this area. We just passed him, actually. Those are the cars we're coupling to, by the way, in case you uh, didn't catch that. We're coupling to those cars. He's there to monitor our progress, I guess, because we're the new guy. Looks like 8806 is coming out as well. Let's go back to that. Uh, I can't really see the tag right now, but it is back there. There he is. He's still coming out. So all the way to the reverse point. Our tracks are set for us all the way to our stop, but we're not being told that yet. I looked at the map when I first did this, and everything is set for us right away. You can go straight to where you need to go. Now, so go by, so you don't have to necessarily stop on the dot here. Nonetheless, if you can time the stop to a stop right at the exact point, kudos for you. That's really good. So, it breaks off. We're, oh, hold on. Before we reverse, actually, let's check the map. We have to get our point set. Where is it? There we are. So we have to go right here. We have to set this city, this point, this point. Okay, on we go. Now we have to do this by. We have to be leaving by nine ten. So we have it's nine oh four right now. We have to leave by nine ten. That is our objective. Okay, we're going fifteen. Let's look out the window. Excellent. Now, we have, let's hop on the back of the train, because if we keep going too fast, we're going to be crashing here. So, you have to make sure we slow down in time for those cars. You can see them coming up right there very, very fast. So, we're going to put some brakes on. Feels a little more reasonable now. I'm going to put the reverse straight and forward because I don't feel concerned about this now at all. We're good to go. If you watch, we can actually do the uh, patented reverse technique to slow down, but I don't... This The, the brakes are pretty good in this train. I don't care too much about that. So, brakes. Should be hitting the cars now. All right, we're going to stop here for a moment. We have to actually stay here for a moment. So uh, we are at Test Shed Signing 2, making our stop. Normally I go for a camera view here, but I don't think I need to. Because I found out as I was going to do that that something interesting happens here. So we're going to let things play out for a moment. That's good. Wait here while we check over your couplings. Okay. I'm sure they're just fine, but... So there's our uh, worker who's doing the work. Look at his watch. Very important work, if you ask me. Gotta know what time it is. Everything's in order. You can now exit one either and get to slope. You won't need to set any more switches. You'll pass by Altoona Passenger Station before arriving at Slope Yard. Stop as close to Ted Jennings as you can. He's working at Slope today and has been told to keep an eye out for your arrival. Tom Jones sent you. Okay. So as you can see, there were some camera views built into the scenario that we didn't have to uh, create ourselves. First one was pretty good with the video. The second one I didn't care for as much. Could have done a little better than that. So we're going to take our exit. As you can see, we haven't been awarded any points yet, and this is a queer scenario. going to see if change number one that I made works. That's the first thing I'm going to check out. And we will know that as soon as we get to the Juanita Gate up ahead. That's in about a little over half a mile from us. Once we get by the Juanita Gate, which is our 910 checkpoint, we're going to go to Altoona Wayward Freight and then onwards to our final stop. So our final stop is within two miles. So we are in Altoona. There's not much to really discuss here today. Looking out the window, we're going to be coming through Altoona Station. I'll give them some more as we go by. Let's look at this side. 
nice view of everything on this side of the track. Let's put a little speed on just to add some good power. Because good power is better than bad power. Am I right? Rano is 0.4% slope, so I had to put a little more gas on to get some power, and now I kind of want to hold... Nope, can't hold. Now can I hold? No, can't hold. Okay. Let's look around over here. Rolling hills, beautiful landscapes. Yep. On this side, beautiful brick building, beautiful structure. Okay, enough of that. So there are only three stations on this route. Altoona, uh, Creston, and Jonestown. Jonestown, however you say it. I think they said we're at the Altoona end. If you happen to drive past here, it counts as last call ever went out for us. Us included. So, peering through the window here, uh, I don't see the station yet, but... Still on a 0.4% gradient here. We are being given a... That's not... That's not our signal, I don't think. Whoops. I don't think that's our signal. We would not have a stop signal here. No, that is not our signal. There's too many signals here. Yeah, that's a signal for a different track, the one next to us, and that is a stop signal, because we have access. So we are permitted to go. I guess these signals are the New York New Haven signals. We got our timeliness bonus. Notice that it got me 500 points. I did that. Uh, the scenario is originally set up for 400 points each stop, and there's two stops. And there's actually a 50 point accuracy window at the end of the scenario, so that for the uh, final stop, because you have to stop on a dime literally on a dime. So, needless to say, um, the maximum score is 850, and it's more arcade style than it is anything else, because you have to make that last stop perfectly if you want your points. Now, again, maybe the points were more important back then. I don't know. I wasn't around then. But they don't mean anything now, because the scenarios used to unlock sequentially. Now they don't. I don't know if you had to have a perfect score, the 850, to get the next scenario to unlock. Why they didn't do it for a thousand of that case, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it doesn't matter nowadays whether you get that score or not. There's no reason to worry about it. It's just way too easy to cheat the scenario result, as I'm proving to you by actually cheating the scenario result. So there's the Altuna Yard. This is where I should probably do a little bit of speeding just to take some points off to show you the accuracy bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the gas for a moment. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do it intentionally. It did not do it. Okay, I actually didn't get caught for speeding. Interesting. We'll do it now. Now we're caught for speeding. There we go. Let's take the points off. And you're going to see the accuracy stop up ahead is indeed an accuracy stop when we get some additional points for it. So again, that one was intentional. Probably gonna take off about 40 points, I'd still be fine. We're going through a bridge over the tracks. What kind of bridge is that, actually? Just a footbridge? Just a random footbridge, apparently. Okay. I don't know. Uh, supposedly we're supposed to go by Altoona Station here. I don't see it yet. Where is Altoona Station? Let's zoom in on where we are. Oh, we're in the yard to the uh, north. That's where we started. The track goes off in this direction. Good to know. So Altoona Station is right there next to our Go Via Point. So yeah, our Go Via Point actually represents uh, where Altoona Station is. I just didn't realize that because I didn't see the station yet. We're going to have a 1.1% uphill gradient up ahead. I think I remember that number. There's a train sitting in a signal there. Is he? He's not doing anything. Okay, we're 8552, I believe. So, Altoona Station is somewhere in this direction. Is that it? Yeah, this is it. You see the passengers here? This is Altoona Station right here. This is Altoona. And there we go over in the distance. 
So welcome to Altoona, ladies and gentlemen. Not really much to show at the station, just like the average American station along the way. So now we're heading for Slope Yard 1. And there is the proof that we have to stop on a dime. Final stop. Go right there and pop the brakes to a full zero right there. I'm going to put a little speed on because we are going to have issues with the uphill here. Oh, look at this. Isn't this adorable? Isn't this adorable? Aww. Guy with his new sports car, trying to get the girl. Ah, adorable. I wasn't even trying to get that, that just showed up. So we need to stop next to Tom Jennings. There's Tom Jennings. He's straight ahead. I think he's on this track. Might be the next one. I don't remember. I think it is actually the next one. Yep. Oh, a two over actually. Might be the last one. Oh, it is the last one. There you go. This it's this number one is the one on the far left. There you go. Information you didn't know before you started today. Now you know, we have a, a little neighborhood over here. A roadway. Curved road that ends. So we're going to stop next to our friend Tom Jennings. Friend isn't the right word, more like boss. So gas off. Put a little bit of the brakes on. I'm not going to worry about accuracy because I know I've already got the points because of my little modification. The way a scenario I think should be done like this, how you have the little, you have your little maximum score possible just from the point stops, then the accuracy adds on. But if you have a lot of accuracy points, you can probably take a few of your point stops away. It'd be just fine as well. So we're going to stop right here. I think this is where we want to go. Let's look at the train. Tom Jennings. Jones wants me to say hi. He sent me. And we're going to wait to see what Tom Jennings has to say to us uh, because um, he was expecting us and I'm sure he'll be happy to welcome us to the yard. You made it to Slope Safe and Sound then. I'm Ted Jennings, I said Tom Jennings. And it looks like you will do just fine. You'll be working around the yard for now as you'll need more experience before we let you run a mainline service. Good job. So we're going to go ahead and go to our scoring screen and see how we did here. So as you can see, I uh, purposely mucked up the points, uh, not because I want to be on the leaderboard on top, even though that is kind of a nice little touch. Uh, the 847 is gone now on my list. But um, I wanted to show you that the, the reason I did the speeding was to show you that there is the accuracy stop. So I could have set that for 475 for each stop and therefore relied on the full accuracy points. But I'm not a masochist. I really am not a masochist. I don't like that setup. And... Um, there should be a little bit of leeway anyway for things like accuracy. So you can still get a perfect score out of it. So I've done it the way I want to do it. Don't question me on it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that for other scenarios along the way as well because I'm pretty sure, and you'll see when we get to the career uh, tab and we see the other scenarios and the scores we see on those, you'll see that we probably are going to have that problem most of the way down. The only scenarios I felt that was the point scores on were actually, was actually the final scenario. That's the only scenario I actually found 1,000 point scores on. So... This is basically like Portsmouth Direct Line all over again. With the odd one where they max out the score and the rest of them. Ah, whatever you want. Whatever you get. So, basically, I'm just going to do it however I want to do it. It's the basic way to put it. So, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time for scenario number two, which is going to be the uh, danger scenario. And, oh boy, is that an interesting scenario. 
uh, you're going to enjoy that one, I think. So I'll see you next time for that. I'm Cyclone. Uh, again, have a wonderful day, evening, night, and see you next time. Bye-bye.